My name is Jabari Best, and I'm part of the Sugar Lakes training team here. And today, we'll be covering two things when it comes to boosting response rates. The first main topic is going to be the development and design of a survey. The second main topic is going to be communication. How do you communicate your survey throughout the entire process from start to finish, from design to the survey being sent out and you starting to receive responses? In terms of the first subtopic in development and design that we're going to touch on is the importance of keeping your survey short and sweet. There is actually an inverse relationship to the length of a survey and the response rate that a survey gets. The shorter that a survey is, the higher the response rate. As the length of the survey increases, response rates decrease. So when possible, you want to keep your survey short and sweet. Some ways in which you can do that is by using logic on our platform, which could be question display logic, answer display logic, single question branching, multi-question branching, which allows the participants to either see the question, the answers, or the pages of the survey that pertains and is relevant to them. You can also utilize pre-population. This allows your participant to answer the questions that you don't that you don't know about them. For instance, if you already know where someone lives in terms of their state, city, perhaps you know their manager, or you know their college major something along those lines there. Well, if you already know this information, you wouldn't need for the participant of your survey to fill out the information. You can simply allow them to have that information be pre-populated in, which saves them time, and they can simply answer the questions that you don't know the correct answer to. Along with keeping your survey short and sweet, you also want to make sure that your design of your survey and your survey is engaging. A great way to do this is to use different question types. We've all have either taken a survey that's similar to the one on the left here, or maybe we've even created one that's similar to the one on the left. It's very easy once you realize that the answer questions are yes and no, radio button to just simply go write down the questions and not even read the questions. By switching the question types, at least allows the participant to have to read the question, read the answer types, and make sure that they're selecting the right one. It keeps the participant engaged in the survey. You can also use our visual settings to change the colors, change the fonts, so it doesn't have to look like it does here on the left-hand side. You have some freedom to make it more engaging with the question types and also the visual designs section. The last point here on development and design is clarity. The importance of making sure that your questions are clear and also your answer choices are clear. For the top question that you see here on the right-hand side, if you're going to reference an article, it's perfectly acceptable to include a link above that question or in that question, perhaps a screenshot of the article that you're referencing, or you can add the article through our descriptive text type of question that you can add right above it so that way your participants can reference easily this article 10 that you're, you're referring to on the survey. For the bottom question, it's more so about the answer choices here in the bottom example. 
with your answer choices, you always want to make sure that you're allowing your participants, once again, you're keeping it short and simple. If someone here is 24 years old, 34 years old, which one should they choose? You never want to put your participants in a scenario in which they, if you're giving them a single a radio button, which is a single select answer, you want to make sure that they have a clearly defined answer to select. So here, 18 to 24, 25 to 34 or 33, and then 34 to 45 would be better answer choices here. You also want to make sure that you're using the correct language for your participants. This can be certain industries have certain jar jargon. So you want to make sure that you're speaking the like, right language there. But then obviously we have uh, different languages around the world. So making sure that you're seeing the surveys and you're also using the correct language where that's a more so of a jargon or a natural different language to the right participants. So communication, our second half of our training today. It's very important to communicate before the survey even arrives to your participants. You do this to create interest and awareness that the survey is coming, and this is why it's important. It will let your participants know the purpose of it. They should know how much time they should be uh, expected to set, set aside to take this survey. And you can also let them know how the results will be used. This will keep your participants informed. They will know how much time they need. They'll know why they're taking the survey. And we find that usually when people know the why behind something, the why behind their why why they are taking the survey, they're more apt to participate in the survey. When distributing the survey, you want to make sure that you're using an appealing email template. So customizing that email template so that your participants know that it's coming from your company. You want to choose the, the method of distribution that works best for the participant. If you're sending it to a group of young adults, perhaps looking into SMS as a, a means to distribute your survey, because typically the majority are usually near their phones. However, if you're sending a survey to people who are perhaps 50 and above, maybe email would be a better route for those participants, just for example. Once again, you wanna make sure that you have it in the right language. And also you wanna make sure that you're sending it at, at the right time on the right day for those participants. We find that typically sending a survey at the end of the day, around four or five o'clock in the afternoon, um, Eastern time, isn't necessarily the best route because most people are at that time they're trying to get away from their emails. They try not to look at any more work stuff for the day. So you send a survey to them, but just come off as more work to do. So you want to send it and figure out what's the best time to send this survey for your participants, your particular audience that you're going for. And lastly here, you want to ensure that delivery will happen. So you need to verify your you sender's email address, you need to authenticate your domain. And if you're sending internally, you want to whitelist subalytics. Following up, once the survey has been out, you want to send reminders to non-participants. This is something that can be automated to do so, to send in two days or three days after that original invitation has been sent out. Over time, you would want to experiment with the invitation message 
and and make certain tweaks and adjustments to figure out which invitation works best. And that's something that you can track. Those metrics can be tracked within our track section of our Sobolegas platform. So you can see what's happening with your invitations. Are they, for some reason, being bounced? Well, if so, we need to refer to the last slide, make sure that our domain is authenticated, and make sure that our email address is verified. Are they being delivered but not open? Okay, well, is it a timing issue there? Are they being delivered open and just simply not responded to? Okay, is it, it maybe once again the invitation message, or are they being open? Would they being delivered open and responded to? Well, that's a sign that you potentially have a great invitation message. You're sending it at the right time. You have everything verified and your domain authenticated. So hopefully this quick training on boosting your response rates helps. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at support1 at Thank you.